Evans, Helen here, and that means I am delivering your next natural sciences lesson to you. We are looking at the national electricity grid at the moment, and today's lesson is going to focus on the kinds of energy transfers that happen in the national grid. So let's remind ourselves of what this network of electricity generation and supply is all about. We call it the National Electricity Grid, and it is a circuit that shows us how we take coal in a power station and how we generate or make electricity by the process of transferring the potential energy from coal into electrical energy. And our electrical energy then is transmitted across the country because remember, it is a national electricity grid. Once those power lines bring the electricity to the substations, the substations then distribute them to different towns in the area and even to different consumers, such as your houses, shops, schools, hospitals, factories, anyone that is going to consume or use electricity. Now we're focusing on energy transfers, and so we need to say there has to be a source of energy before we can even go through all of these energy transfers that take place. So let's talk about the energy source because we've been talking about a coal-powered or a coal-fired power station. But are there other energy sources that are available to start off this whole transfer of energy? And you need to remember right back to the beginning of this term where we looked at other sources of energy such as solar energy and water. The falling or movement of water gives us hydropower. We've also looked at wind energy and even we mentioned nuclear energy. Now, in each of these cases, we can see here that our whole trans energy transfer system starts with the coal, but it could very easily be starting with solar power or water power or wind power or even nuclear power. But because South Africa relies mainly on coal-powered power stations, we're looking at the transfer of energy from coal. So, now we've discussed the source of energy, which in this case is coal. Let's look at the next section of the process or our system to look at the energy transfers that take place both in the generation and in the supply of electricity. Remember, when we talk about the generation of electricity, we talk about how it's made. And supply, we talk about how it is distributed or shared amongst all the consumers that require it. So we're going to use labels and we're going to see how the energy transfers work. The first label we're going to start off with is potential energy. So where is the potential energy in this system? Remember that your coal is the potential energy. The potential energy, and it is in the form of chemical energy. Now, in our last lesson, we learned about how the power station actually generates the electricity. Remember that the coal, which is our potential energy, is pulverized or made into fine powder, which is fed into a furnace. And here we see our first energy transfer because in the furnace, the coal is burnt. And now we have potential energy being transferred to heat energy. 
So we've addressed the fact that our first energy transfer is potential chemical energy into heat energy. And that happens inside the furnace where the coal is burnt. But the heat energy boils water and converts that water into steam. So our heat energy then is responsible for turning the turbine blades. And because the blades are moving or turning, we can see that our heat energy is now being transferred into mechanical kinetic energy. So here is our next energy transfer, heat energy to mechanical kinetic energy. The turning turbine spins this shaft, which you'll remember from our last lesson, causes the generator to produce electricity. And how does it do that? Well, it's got a magnet, a large magnets inside it, and it's got wires wrapped around the magnets, and this then generates electrical energy in the generator, or it makes electrical energy. So here is our next energy transfer. Mechanical kinetic energy is transferred into electrical energy, which is then sent off down the power lines. So if you have to identify the energy transfers, let's go over them again. Potential energy to heat energy, heat energy to mechanical kinetic energy, and the mechanical kinetic energy to electrical energy. Now, as with any system that is going to use energy and have an input and an output, there are going to be energy losses in the generation of electricity. And we need to think of where some of the energy could possibly be wasted. Can you think of where energy loss could take place in the generation of electricity? Well, let's go back to this slide and let's focus on the furnace. In the furnace, our coal is burnt to generate heat. And from what you know about heat energy is that radiation occurs, conduction occurs, so all of these pipes are going to get very hot, as well as this convection current that is going to heat the pipes. So we know then that some of the energy loss is going to be through heat energy. We're going to see that although we're burning the coal to boil the water to make steam, not all, not 100% of that energy is going to be transferred to the water. Some of the energy is going to be lost as heat to the surroundings. And of course, some of the energy is going to be used by the power station itself. The power station itself requires energy to function. We need to have lights on in the power station. We need to move machinery. And I'd like you in your mind now to estimate how much or what percentage of the energy is transferred to useful energy. You think of an estimate. Do you think, we know that it's not 100% because we've already identified some energy losses, but is it going to be 70% that's useful? 90%? Is it going to be less than 70%? You pick a percentage that you think, and we're going to see what that percentage is actually. So here is one of our Sankey diagrams for a coal-powered power station. We can see that we get 100% input energy in the form of our coal. 
And we can see that 30 plus 10 plus 10 plus 50 makes up our 100%. 50 and 30 is 80, 90, 100%. So we know that our Sankey diagram is accurate in terms of our input equaling our output energy. But when we start analyzing the different kinds of outputs, we see from our generator, we're losing 10%. That's wasted. To run the power station is also a kind of wasted energy. Because remember, what is the aim of the power station? The aim is to produce electricity. So any other outputs are in fact wasted energy. The heat loss to the surroundings is a massive 50%. And in fact, of the 100% energy that we use in the beginning, only 30% comes out as useful electricity. What was your estimate here? Was it anywhere near 30%? Well, that is the actual number. It's 30% that is useful energy. So we have to ask some questions here. Is the production of electricity in a coal-powered power station energy efficient? We're putting in 100% and we're only getting out 30% useful energy. So I would say no, it's not very efficient. But not only is it energy wasteful, here's our big energy waste percentage, which is going to be 70% in total wasted. Another disadvantage of the power station is the pollution. In order to burn that coal, we are going to be producing air pollution, which is a very big problem. We're also going to not only be producing soot or carbon in the air, we're going to be producing large amounts of carbon dioxide, which is a greenhouse gas. Now, if we were to compare the energy efficiency of our coal-powered power station, there it is here, with, for example, a nuclear power station, and we're just going to be comparing it in terms of percentages. We put in 100% with our input energy with coal, and we've already seen that 70% of it is wasted energy, and only 30% is useful electrical energy. We can see that our Sankey diagram has a wide arrow versus a narrow arrow for our useful energy. If we looked at a nuclear power station where we're using uranium as fuel and not coal, we see in the same way we put in 100%, but the process in producing electricity from nuclear power is we get out useful energy 42% and we're wasting 58%. So we need to compare the coal power producers wasted 70%, useful 30%. In terms of our nuclear power station, we are producing wasted energy of 58% and useful energy of 42%. We still have an electrical supply or a system that is producing more wasted energy than useful energy. However, 42% is greater than 30%. And so we could say then that our nuclear power station is far more energy efficient than the coal-powered power station. And that is what we have to do as a country, is move to more energy efficient ways of producing our electricity. But that's it for today. Join me again next time when we're going to be learning more about the National Electricity Grid. For today, goodbye. Thank you.